examples of order of operations. This is number 25 on page 9, or sorry, on page 7. Page 7. Um, and the question is 12 plus 3 minus 7 times 2 plus 8. Which, what order do we do things in? According to PEMDAS, okay, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, we would do the multiplication first. 12 plus 3 minus 14 plus 8, because 7 times 2 is 14. Now, we have to decide between addition and subtraction. Well, it's pretty easy, according to PEMDAS again, because parentheses, exponents, division, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, the A is before the S, the addition before the subtraction, so we add 12 plus 3, we get 15. 15 minus 14 plus 8. Well, now what do we do? Because addition's over here and subtraction's there. Do we follow PEMDAS again? Aha. Uh -huh. No, you say? Why not? Well, because there's a special case here. And the special case is when we switch around the subtraction and the addition, we go left to right. Because this subtraction is before the addition, left to right, we do the subtraction first. 15 minus 14 is 1, 1 plus 8 is 9, and we're done. We box the answer. Now, that gives us a couple acronyms. PEMDAS has a couple cousins. PEMDAS, the ancient sage, P-E-M-D-A-S, has a cousin named PEMDSA, P-E-M-D-S-A, because sometimes subtraction becomes before addition, when you're reading left to right. Also, P-E-D-M-S-A, PEDMSA, sometimes division, goes before multiplication. It gets switched around, and over here, PEDMAS, sometimes division goes before multiplication when you're moving left to right. On this question here, does anybody know 72 divided by 6 plus 3, what we do first? Yeah, Shannon. You would divide. Yeah. And what's 72 divided by 6? 12. 12 plus 3 <laughs> equals 15. Oh. Boom. That's All right, so some principles in 1-2. This is page 9 and 10. The commutative <coughs> principle over addition says that A plus B is equal to B plus A. In other words, we can switch the position of A and B, and it'll be the same answer. Same thing for multiplication, except now the operation is multiplying. A times B equals B times A. And the identity property, a plus zero equals a, is a little different. The identity property says, what do I add to a to make this the same thing as that side? Well, zero plus a is equal to a. So that's the identity property for addition. As far as multiplication goes, what do I multiply by to get the same thing on both sides? Well, one is the invisible one. It's the one thing that you can multiply by that doesn't change the answer. So one times a is equal to a. Those are our properties for 1-2, and now we're going to do some questions. That's, so this is page 14, number 16. And these questions, they're simplification questions, and they're using the identity property. And the way you use the identity property for these questions They'll, they'll actually give you a hint, they'll tell you how to use it. But basically, um, you want to find a, a, a number that goes over itself and divides into here. So what number divides into 56 through 7? Yes? Eight. 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 Okay, so what we can do, now this is the way you need to do these questions. Um, you're going to write, how many times, 56 divided by 8 equals what? Seven. Right, so 56 divided by 8, okay? 7 divided by 8. So guess what? What's 8 over 8? 1. Right. So have we actually changed the problem? Look at that. It's already getting messy. I'm going to write that bigger. There we go. 56 over 7 divided by 8 over 8. Because 8 over 8 is equal to 1, we haven't, technically, we haven't really changed the problem. All we've done is take out something that is even on both top and bottom. So what's 56? It's not by 8, it's by 7. We're going to simplify in this question. This is page 14, number 16. And these specific questions are fractions. And they want you to understand the identity principle. 56 divided by 7 goes in evenly. And the answer is 8. But the way that that happens is that 56 gets divided by 7 over 7. In other words, it gets divided by 7 on the top and on the bottom. What that really says is that 56 over 7 is being divided by 1, which means it's actually not changing. It's just changing the way it looks. Do you see the difference? Yes. Because you're dividing by 1 or multiplying by 1 doesn't actually change the core of the problem. It just changes the way it looks. 
So here we go. 56 divided by 7 equals what? 8. 8. And eight. 7 divided by 7 equals 1. And that one. equals 8. And that's our answer. So, I mean, what? but 8 is the same as 56 over 7. Right. Yes. It's the same thing. It's the same value. Exactly. But it just looks different. This is what's called simplifying. That's why it's called simplifying. All right, now we're on page 14. This is number 32. And these kind of questions ask whether or not this expression is equivalent to that expression. So in other words, the expression bxy plus bx, is it equivalent to ybx plus bx? Question is, Carolyn is going to tell us a little bit about this story. What is it, Carolyn? Yes. It is. How come? Because um, it's the commutative property. You can like exchange the bx and y for the y, x, y b, and x. Exactly. And you just can solve. switch them, right? Good job, Carolyn. And um, basically, the bx can come first. Uh, sorry, no, what got switched here? I'm sorry, I got confused myself. Which one got switched? Bxy? What, what got switched? Um, wait, what? What got what switched in this question? Oh, bxy and y, b, and x. That's right. So the actual uh, y got put over yeah, in front of there. Right. Yeah? In other words, this got put over there. And that's okay, right? There you go. So um, that's the commutative principle. Number 36. This one, this kind of question asks you to simplify. So how do we do that? Do yes, it. Alexis. All right. Well, you do on the bottom, you do 2 times 11, and that equals 22. OK. And then you can um, cancel out the a's. Yes, you can cancel out the a's because a over a. What I'm going to do is rewrite this, OK? So how do we write 33? We rewrite 33. What should we write? Well, how about we write it as 3 times what? 11. 11, right? Yeah. S, B, A, over, now 2 times 11, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then times A. We're just breaking it into its factors. Now that we can see there's what on top and bottom? That by the identity principle, what happens, Cairo? Um, right, because 11 over 11 equals 1, right? So we can cross it out. 11 over 11 equals 1, right? And A over A also equals 1. So when we're crossing things out, we're not really, you know, you get, you get the illusion that you're just putting your pen through it and it's disappearing forever. Well, kind of. It's just the fact that it's really not that you're doing it. It's the fact that 11 over 11 is just equal to 1. And 1 can be invisible. Remember what we said? So that's where it's going. 11 over 11, according to the identity principle, is equal to 1. And 1 is invisible, so there we go. What about A over A? A over A, same thing, right? So what's our final answer? What's left over? 3SB over 2. And I box the answer. Did y'all get it? No? Jonathan? Does it matter if I did it like way differently? Yeah, it does matter. Um, I mean, you probably did shortcuts and all that. Because right now we're doing this particular principle. You're learning it a certain way. And I know you got it right, but what no, I, I want you to be able to do... I don't know if it was a shortcut, though. That doesn't, I'll look at your own thing. But you basically, I want you to do it this way for now because it's important to learn the principles. The principle here is the identity principle. That you understand that you're not just crossing it out. You're actually breaking it into factors. And then when this factor on the top is the same as on the bottom, it's equal to 1. And 1 is invisible, so you don't have to write it. And there it goes.